Hello, welcome back to the Net Effect. I am Ashwadi Krishna, your study partner to crack UGC Net. And those who are preparing for the Assistant Information Officer exam, please do join with us because we are sharing almost the same syllabus. We have already discussed introductory part of media laws and ethics. And today I am going to discuss with you five important media laws that are mentioned in your UGC net revised syllabus. Okay. A man's reputation is always considered as a valuable property. Section 499 of the Indian Penal Code IPC deals with it. According to Section 499 of IPC, defamation refers to any oral or written statement made by a person which damages the reputation of another person. Are you confused? Okay, in simple words, defamation can be called the writing, publication and speaking of a false statement which causes injury to reputation and good name of other person. In India, defamation can be viewed as a civil offence as well as criminal offence. Section 500 which is on punishment for defamation reads, Whoever defames another shall be punished with simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to two years or with fine or with both. Criminal offences and civil offences are generally different in terms of their punishment. Criminal cases will have jail time as a potential punishment, whereas civil cases generally only result in monetary damages or orders to do or not to do something. Defamation falls into two categories. If the false statements are written and are published, then it is libel. That is, written defamation is called libel. If the defamatory statement is spoken, then it is a slander. Okay, spoken defamation is called slander. When the libel is addressed to the eyes, the slander is addressed to the ears. Any such act occurring on the cyberspace leads to cyber defamation or online defamation. Cyber defamation occurs when a computer connected to the internet is used as a tool or a medium to defame a person or an entity. For example, sending defamatory emails, publishing any defamatory comments in Twitter or Facebook comes under online defamation. Any person aggrieved of cyber defamation can lodge a complaint to the Cyber Crime Investigation Cell at the National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal. No person has the right to repeat a slanderous statement without any justification. If a person who is aware that a defamatory statement is false and still repeats or communicate it further, then he can also be held liable for defamation. Defenses available against defamation There are a lot of defenses available against defamation. Let's check a few here. Justification by truth. A defamatory statement should be false because the truth is a defense to defamation. If the statement made is true, then there is no defamation as the falsity of the statement is an essential ingredient of defamation. The law does not punish anyone for speaking the truth. Fair and bona fide comment. You can also consider something defamatory when it is fair and in the matter of public interest. Absolute privilege. It gives the person an absolute right to make the statement even if it is defamatory. Generally, absolute privilege exempts defamatory statements made during judicial proceedings, by government officials, by legislators during debates in the parliament, during political speeches in the parliamentary proceedings and communication between spouses. That is all about defamation. Let's move on to sedition. What is sedition? Article 19.1a of the Constitution of India grants us freedom of speech and expression. But that is not complete freedom. There are reasonable restrictions too. Sedition refers to evident actions, justice or speech by a person in oral or written form which expresses his or her discontent against the 
established government in the state with the aim to incite violence or hatred against it. Section 124A of Chapter 6 of the Indian Penal Code describes it. The anti-sedition law is essential to protect and preserve the stability of the government and to prevent speech and expression that aims to cause public disorder. Let me give you some examples of activities that are considered seditious in nature. Raising slogans against the government of India, articles that incites public disorder, public speech that incites violence. And a person convicted of sedition is punishable with either imprisonment ranging from three years to a lifetime, a fine or both. Sedition is a cognizable offence which means the police can arrest a person accused of sedition without needing a warrant for the same. Sedition is a non-bailable offence which means a person arrested for sedition cannot be released on bail. Next in our list is Law of Obscenity. Section 292 of IPC states that if any material taken as a whole is lascivious or appeals to prurient interest and tends to deprave and corrupt the person who read, see or hear the matter contained will come under the ambit of obscenity. Section 294 of the Indian Penal Code, IPC, punishes obscene acts or words in a public place. To be considered a crime, the obscenity must cause annoyance to others. A person convicted under this law can face up to three months imprisonment. Obscene books are similarly criminalized under Section 292. I hope my video helped you to understand the basics of media laws. And if you like my video, make sure you subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon and do share it with your friends. Okay, have a great learning time. Take care. Until then, bye-bye.